Hey y'all, it's Rosie here and today is Tuesday, March something. Tuesday, March 28th. Really? Tuesday, March 28th. Okay. So, this morning I went to OA, like usual. So, in OA, we actually had OA outside, which was fun. We got locked out of the church where we normally have it. It is what it is. I thought what might be a good idea is to do a reading from step one. So today we actually did step one as a reading for um, our meeting today because we had several new people and our leader decided we would do step one. So I thought I would do a reading on step one just to have it uh, just to have it up here. All right, step one. We admitted that we were powerless over food, that our lives had become unmanageable. And the spiritual principle is honesty. Now, before I get into this too heavily, I want to mention again that just going to OA, you don't need to be of a certain denomination. You don't even need to believe in God. Uh, the idea just being that there's some larger power greater than you, i.e. the universe, whoever, whatever, however it works for you. As long as you believe that there's something bigger than yourself, it doesn't have to be a God. Um, the idea being that like you're going to give up things to the higher power to deal with and take the burden off yourself. Okay. If that made sense, I will get into the reading. In Overeaters, in Overeaters Anonymous, we begin our program of recovery by admitting that we are powerless over food. Some of us have difficulty with this admission because we've had so much experience in trying to control our eating. This girl. At one time or periodically, most of us were able to do so. Our eating may be out of control right now, we persisted in thinking, but someday soon we'll again find the strength of character needed to limit our eating excesses, and this time we'll keep them under control. For all of us, however, the days of controlled eating grew fewer and farther apart until at last we came to OA looking for a new solution. In OA, we learned that a lack of willpower isn't what makes us compulsive eaters. In fact, Compulsive overeaters often exhibit an exceptional amount of willpower, but compulsive eating is an illness that cannot be controlled by willpower. None of us decided to have this disorder any more than we would have decided to have any other disease. We can now cease blaming ourselves or others for our compulsive overeating. The disease of compulsive eating is threefold in nature, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Compulsive eating does not stem simply from bad eating habits learned in childhood, nor just from adjustment problems, nor merely from a love of food, though all three of those may be factors in its development. It may be that many of us were born with a physical or emotional predisposition to eat compulsively. Whatever the cause, today we are not like normal people when it comes to food and eating behaviors. Back. Like compulsive overeaters, normal eaters sometimes find pleasure and escape from life's problems in excess food. A normal eater, however, gets full and loses interest in food. Compulsive eaters often have an abnormal reaction to food. Some of us overindulge and can't quit, and then we crave more. Sometimes the craving is for a particular food. We feel compelled to eat another serving, another serving, and then another, and then another. Other compulsive eaters indulge in the illusion of control through restricting food intake. Some of us purge after eating in an effort to control our weight. What all compulsive eaters have in common is that our bodies and minds seem to send us signals about food that are quite different than what a normal eater receives. We have found through much experience that no matter how long we abstain from eating compulsively, and no matter how adept we become at facing life, we will always have these abnormal tendencies. Those of us who have returned to our former compulsive eating behaviors, even after years in recovery, have found it harder than ever to stop. 
Clearly, if we are to live free of the bondage of compulsive eating, we must abstain from all foods and eating behaviors that cause us to eat compulsively. But this too has proven impossible for us to do with willpower alone. Before we found OA, every diet or period of control was followed by a period of uncontrolled eating. This is because our malady was not just physical in nature. It was emotional and spiritual as well. We are obsessed with food and no amount of self-control or weight loss can cure us. Because of this obsession, the day always came when the excess food looked so inviting to us and we couldn't resist. And our firm resolutions were forgotten. Sooner or later, we lost control and returned to compulsive eating and compulsive food behaviors. This mental obsession was something we couldn't be rid of by our unaided human will. If we were to stop eating compulsively and stay stopped, we had to find another power stronger than ourselves for relief. So I'm gonna pause real quick. So that goes back to what I was saying with, it doesn't have to be God, like, or whatever power you believe in, um, Allah, Vishnu, somebody, whoever it is. Um, it can literally just be the universe and just give the power, just give it up, just give it up and stop taking all the burdens onto yourself. Um, I know it doesn't really say it here yet, but if you can forgive yourself for your burdens, it'll go a long way in helping you along this journey. Now, obviously this is still just step one. So back into it. Most of us try to deny ourselves that we have this disease. In OA, we are encouraged to take a good look at our compulsive eating, obesity, obsession with food and body image, and the self-destructive things we have done to avoid obesity. The dieting, the starving, the over-exercising, or the purging. Once we honestly examine our histories, we can deny it no longer. Our eating and our attitude towards food are not normal. We have a disease. Part two of step one is admitting that our lives had become unmanageable. And I know personally for me, like that's a hard one and it's a hard pill to swallow that you can't manage your own self. We felt that we had managed very well in life despite our problems with food and weight. Many of us held responsible jobs and ran our households with reasonable success. We had friends who liked us and many of us have fairly good marriages. That these didn't make us happy was surely due to the fact that we were fat or felt we were. If we could just get to the perfect weight, life would be wonderful. Surely it would be exaggerating to say that we were incapable of managing our lives. We certainly could use some help with the compulsive eating, but for the rest of life, we were doing just fine. Again, an honest look at our lives helped us to take step one. Were we really excelling in our jobs or just getting by? Were our homes pleasant places to be or were we living in an atmosphere of depression and anger? Had our chronic unhappiness over our eating problems affected our relationships? Were we truly in touch with our feelings or had we buried our anger and fear and false cheerfulness? We sometimes recognized we had problems but felt that life would be manageable if only we could stop the compulsive eating. Whenever we did stop, however, we found life unbearable. Even getting to our desired weight did not cure our unhappiness. And again, I say that is a hard pill to swallow that even if I could fix that one little thing, my eating, everything else in my life would be perfect. And the sad part is, no, it's not. Everything is wrong. And no matter how hard we try to fight it and control everything, you just can't. So let's see. <clears throat> Many of us believed that our lives would be manageable if only the others around us would do as we wanted. We thought everything would be fine if only our bosses could recognize our worth, if only our spouses would give us the attention we needed, if only our children were well behaved, if only our parents would leave us alone. Our lives became unmanageable when the car wouldn't start, the computer broke down, our bank account book wouldn't balance. We suffered from other people's unmanaged lives or from bad luck. What alternative did we have? We ate to sate the fears, the anxiety, the anger, the disappointment. We ate to escape the pressures of our problems of boredom in everyday life. And we, we procrastinated 
we hid and we ate. And that just felt impactful to me. We procrastinated, we hid, and we ate. And for me, that definitely rings true. Before we came to OA and began discussing our experiences honestly with other compulsive overeaters, we didn't realize how much we had damaged ourselves and others by attempting to manage every detail of life. It was only after we began to recover that we saw the childish self-centeredness of our willful actions. By trying to control others through manipulation and direct force, we had hurt our loved ones. When we tried to control ourselves, we wound up demoralized. Even when we succeeded, it wasn't enough to make us happy. We hid from our pain by eating compulsively, so we didn't learn from our mistakes. We never grew up. Some of us resisted step one because it seemed like negative thinking. If we tell ourselves we're powerless over food, we reasoned, then we program ourselves to go right on eating compulsively. Later, we discovered that far from being a negative factor, the admission of our own powerlessness over food has opened the door to an amazing and newfound power. For the first time in our lives, we recognized, acknowledged, and accepted the truth about ourselves. We are compulsive eaters. We do have an incurable disease. Diabetics who need to be on insulin risk blindness and possible death unless they recognize the truth about their diabetic condition, accept it, and take the prescribed medication. So it is with compulsive overeaters. As long as we refuse to recognize that we have this debilitating, progressive, and ultimately fatal disease, we are not motivated to get the daily treatment that brings about our recovery. Denial of the truth leads to destruction. Only an honest admission to ourselves of the reality of our condition can save us from our destructive eating. The same principle applies to our unmanageable lives. As long as we believe that we are already know what is best for us, we cling to our habitual ways of thinking and acting. Yet these ways of thinking and acting got us into the unhealthy, unhappy condition we were in when we came to OA. In step one, we acknowledge this truth about ourselves. Our current methods of managing have not been successful and we need to find a new approach to life. Having acknowledged this truth, we are free to change and learn. Once we have become teachable, we can give up old thought and behavior patterns that have failed us in the past, beginning with our attempts to control our eating and our weight. Honest appraisal of our experience has convinced us that we can't handle life through self-will alone. First, we grasp this knowledge intellectually, and then finally, we come to believe it in our hearts. When this happens, we have taken the first step and are ready to move ahead in our program of recovery. And honestly, I think sometimes that taking the first step is the hardest part in any journey, especially one that has to do with so much introspection. So I hope that the reading was helpful. Obviously, I didn't give a ton of personal experience and things in mind. Normally, if you're in a session, um, in between almost every power graph, at least one person has something to say. Um, but honestly, that makes the time go quick, if you know what I mean, if everybody shares. So that was step one. I'll probably do a video talking about what all of the 12 steps are. Now, these 12 steps have been adapted from the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. So they're kind of similar, but a bit different. And then I'd like to end this video by mentioning the third of the 12 traditions of Overeaters Anonymous, since we are still in the third month. The only requirement for OA membership is a desire to stop eating compulsively. And that is true. So... If you have a desire to stop eating compulsively, whether that's overeating, whether that's binge eating, whether that's anorexia, anything you're struggling with, if you have questions or you think this might be something you're interested in, feel free to drop a comment or follow me on my Instagram and just DM me from there. It's uh, Rosie Faye Weight Loss on Instagram and I will try and answer any questions you have. And that goes for weight loss surgery too. If you have any questions, I'm only you know, a little over a month out right now from having weight loss surgery. So it's pretty fresh in my mind. You know what I mean? Um, I'll be sure to try and answer whatever you got going on. And if there's a, 
something you want me to check out, a video on YouTube you want me to watch and get my thoughts on, I'd be happy to do it. Again, comments or DM me on Instagram. All right, bye guys. Mm -hmm.